This is KGW News at Noon. And we start with breaking news. Governor Kate Brown tweeting she's shocked and appalled about some very bad news on the COVID vaccine front. Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Braxton. So here's what's happening. The Trump administration was supposed to send out extra doses from a federal stockpile. That's not gonna happen now. It turns out the stockpile doesn't exist. Wow. KGW's Pat Doris is joining us here with the very latest this afternoon. Pat, first off, what does this mean for Oregon? Well, it is a stunning development, Brenda, and it might mean that 65-year-olds and above have to get back in line behind teachers when Group 1B opens up. That was supposed to happen a week from now. It's unclear what this will do to that. It also could mean that the teachers and the seniors, 65 and above, will go together when the shots open for 1B, but it will happen at a much slower pace. The announcement comes as one mass vaccination event continues. It, that is in Salem today, and others are gearing up for this weekend throughout the Portland metro area. All are focused on health care workers and those involved in senior living and nursing homes. That's still Group 1A. The governor had expected a surge in new doses to come to Oregon next week. That surge, by the way, is on top of deliveries that are already expected, and that would have allowed her to say both groups could get shots at the same time. But now that we know that there is no surge, it certainly throws a wrench into those plans. As for current supplies, this really should not affect that. The state reports only 45% of the doses that have been sent to Oregon already have actually been used. That's about 146,000 people. But something like 175,000 doses are still sitting in the freezers unused. Brenda? So, Pat, does this affect any of the planned vaccination events this weekend? I don't think so, because those were based on the supply that had already been sent to the various hospital systems in the greater Portland area. So I think that those will go on unaffected. So real quick, before we let you go, what does this mean for people who already got a first dose and are now waiting for the second one? Well, it is a tremendous question because the stockpile was being held back so that there was a guarantee there would be doses for those people in the second round. And you remember that for Pfizer, it's three weeks after the first and Moderna, it's four weeks after the first. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unclear what this means to that. But I did do some research. I was on the CDC site just a few minutes ago, and they point out that there is no maximum length between that first and second dose. They don't want you to get it too soon, but if you're farther out than three weeks or four weeks or four months, I believe it's still going to be effective. OK, Brenda. that is a little bit of good news to leave us with. Thank you for kind of walking us through this. I know there are a lot of unknowns. We always appreciate your reporting and stay with KGW News for continuing coverage of the situation. The governor's press conference is happening this afternoon at two o'clock, so less than two hours away at this point. We know you have a lot of questions about this, so we will live stream all the updates on KGW.com and here on air. Well, all of this comes as new risk levels start today in Oregon. They determine which businesses can open or which have to close. 26 Oregon counties are now in the extreme risk category. Baker, Clatsop, Coos, and Morrow went from high risk to extreme. That means no indoor dining, gyms and theaters have to close, and retail stores are limited to 50% capacity. Curry County, by the way, is the only county in Oregon at a moderate risk for COVID. In the meantime, Oregon health officials report 1,152 new COVID infections, and another 29 Oregonians died from the virus. The number of people in Oregon in hospitals here with COVID did drop slightly yesterday to 415, but globally, the death toll has now topped 2 million. That's the word from Johns Hopkins University. It took eight months to hit 1 million lives lost, and it took less than four months after that to reach the next million. Developing this noon, the search for a woman swept away by a mudslide in the gorge. Crews are using heavy machinery to dig through debris. They think her car is buried under 15 feet of mud. They don't think 50-year-old Jennifer Moore survived. When that slide happened on Wednesday, she was the last in a line of cars driving along a frontage road in the town of Dotson. 
we learned that her husband was on the phone with her at the time, trying to help her through the storm. While they were on the phone together, he heard Miss Moore panic, scream, and then he heard crashing and collision noises. All of her friends that I've ever met, every patients I've talked to that she's known and stuff that I happen to meet or something, they all say the same thing. You know, she's a really hard working nurse. I had to go off of work a couple years ago and she took a second job. Moore is a nurse. She worked in the oncology unit at Good Samaritan Hospital here in Portland. Meanwhile, crews at the scene of this slide say now they're worried about more landslides in the area, so they are keeping close watch on the hillsides that could be vulnerable. Turning now to the presidential transition. President Trump is set to leave Washington Wednesday morning before the inauguration, and Vice President Mike Pence called VP-elect Kamala Harris to congratulate her and offer his assistance. In the meantime, the Senate has a very delicate balancing act, put the president on trial and deal with Joe Biden's agenda. Here's Tracy Potts with the details. The earliest possible start for an impeachment trial is Wednesday, Inauguration Day, one hour after Joe Biden is sworn in as president. It's hard to predict how many will come down uh, on the side of conviction. With our NBC News poll showing the country almost evenly split on impeachment and removal, a handful of Republicans are considering it. I believe this president violated his oath of office, and I believe there must be consequences. What good comes from impeaching, impeaching President Trump after he's out of office? That's an unconstitutional attack on the presidency. It will divide the country. It will incite violence. According to the New York Times, an intelligence bulletin warns of extremists planning a race war. We're concerned about the potential for violence at multiple protests and rallies. Members of Congress are concerned about their safety. Many of us are, are altering our routines, um, uh, working to get body armor. We're going to ensure that we have a safe inauguration. President-elect Biden announcing his post-inauguration plans, a $1.9 trillion rescue package with faster COVID vaccinations and a $1,400 payment to most Americans. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. We just have to choose between paying rent and putting food on the table. He's hoping the Senate can move quickly on economic relief while dealing with impeachment. And dealing with security, some 21,000 National Guard troops are flowing into Washington while Democrats ask for an investigation into the number of visitors at the Capitol the day before the attack. In hindsight, they think there were an unusual number of visitors and some could have been scoping out the building. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. Oregon National Guard soldiers are among those heading to D.C. for the Biden-Harris inauguration. The Guard's mission is to be ready when there's trouble. And over the last year here in Oregon, there has been no shortage of that. We spoke, spoke with a sergeant in the Guard's military police unit. She'll be in charge of a 12-person squad of MPs. I think it's just going to be like any other year. I mean, we're trained to respond to volumes of crowds, be able to, um, you know, maintain safety for everyone. Um, if it's individuals in the crowd or if it's our fellow um, agencies that we're going to be working with. The MPs from the Oregon Guard leave today and they will be gone for about a week.